What the fuck was that? That sequence starts fine. It could even make for a really interesting premise. But then right before said interesting premise could be established more, the episode just cuts away to something entirely different. You might be saying that it'll make sense later, but trust me, we'll get back to that. This is going to be your first serious mission. Disregarding the fact that Cheeseburger Backpack ended up just being a test, in what way is that not classified as a serious mission? Just look at him. Yeah, he looks ill. Whoa! I don't think Steven could have made a more annoying noise if he tried. Steven just straight up breaks his arm here. These murals down here depict the obstacles Steven and Garnet are going to go through later. That's another really cool piece of foreshadowing. But on the other hand, these murals up here just don't make sense. Who exactly is this giant white lady and why is there this big of a mural dedicated to her? Why did Rose fight her? Is it related to the pyramid? Because Rose is holding out a diamond here, and if we take her true identity into consideration, I have to assume they're foreshadowing something diamond related. So is this lady white diamond? If so, when did Rose fight her? And if not, when exactly did Rose fight this mystery gem and who was around to make these murals out of it? I get that great shows tend to keep some of their cards hidden, but when you draw a giant lady with fucking diamonds around her, and the lady looks remarkably similar to someone who supposedly hasn't left Homeworld in millennia, people are gonna ask questions. What have we told you about touching magical things? Definitely always never do it. This is one of the only good jokes Steven gets this season. Let me have this one. Oh. Nope, I'm gonna spare you the pain of having to hear that shit. Garnet's hands are completely black in this shot. Also, the strings on Steven's ukulele disappear in this shot. In what world is Garnet able to do this? At least with the last one, we see that she lodged her foot into the platform, but these other two jumps are completely gravity-defying. Seriously dangerous. Thank you, Garnet. Why did it take so long for Steven's hair to catch fire? And now it looks more like it had a bite taken out of it more than it looks like it's been singed. Be careful, you might trigger a trap with that gun show. Please don't encourage him. In this shot, the ukulele has broken straps, but then from the next shot onwards, the straps are nowhere to be seen. <sighs> First of all, why did the spikes politely wait for Garnet to flip away before coming back down again? Secondly, what the hell was that noise Garnet just made? <sighs> Get ready, Steven. This is gonna be intense. Get ready, Steven. This is gonna be intense. They used the same voice line twice, back to back with each other. Even if that's meant to be a joke, it's still really jarring. Also, this flashback, and honestly this entire plot point is really badly executed. It honestly feels like this teacup ride segment was made specifically so the Crooniverse could bullshit their way into some kind of conclusion, and it really shows. The fact that the explanation as to what happened was literally spliced in at the most random of times says a lot. I feel like this episode could have been so much better if either A, the pyramid actually had some sort of correlation to the teacup ride being destroyed, or B, you cut the teacup ride stuff out entirely and instead write a better way for Steven and the gems to figure out how the pyramid works. As it stands now, these two things being put together just feels clunky. Gonna have to add five cents for this one. Steven, no! That was one delayed as hell reaction coming from Mrs. Future Vision Lady. Also, Garnet's middle finger is the wrong color in this shot. Steven, you're banned from all the rides, forever! A ban that is never lifted, but I guess was just forgotten about come too short to ride. The axes that were swinging in this room are gone in this shot. The stars on Amethyst's knees aren't drawn in this shot. All the rooms are spinning us around, so we end up here! Well, that doesn't make any sense, considering that in order for that to work out, Steven surely would have felt the room spinning, especially since according to the teacup ride incident, Steven is very susceptible to- <laughs> I am irrationally angry that this is the conclusion the Crooniverse decided to go with. Also, why the hell did Garnet not do this earlier? Surely her future vision would have clued her in on this possibility. What the fuck is this little animation supposed to be? Not to mention, Pearl shoves it back like it's some kind of weird fetish she doesn't want people to know she has. So the gem looks like some kind of triangle on the side, which is the same thing the giant lady had. So is she not White Diamond? Then why draw diamonds around her in a show whose future episodes rely heavily on diamond insignia? The more I read into stuff like this, the more I think the Crooniverse just didn't plan the diamond shit until later, which leaves scenes like this a little baffling. Amethyst Gem disappears in this shot. 
Steven took that explosion head on, yet he's still completely fine. I get he's technically a diamond, but at this point in the story, he's still an inexperienced, squishy baby, so surely that'd do at least a little damage. Somehow, when Pearl bubbles this gem, she also makes all the strawberry stuff on Steven's left arm disappear. Ah, oh, I'd say you handled that adventure very well. He practically sabotaged the entire mission and made everything a hundred times harder for you, so no the fuck he did not. I prefer break it to Steven. Okay, fuck Steven. How in the world did the ukulele survive? Oh! Nope, fuck that. Episode's done. Let's move on to the next one.